Hi, everybody. I'm Mitchell Ostro, and I'm a PhD student at MIT. Today, we've talked about how to compare neural networks at the level of their representational geometry, but oftentimes, the core level of computation in neural networks deals with how neural activity evolves over time. I'm going to introduce my method called dynamical similarity analysis, which is designed to compare neural activity at the level of their dynamics. So as we've seen, comparison is everywhere in computational neuroscience. We do all sorts of comparisons between models and data, data and data, or even models and models. And the prominence of comparison motivates an important question. How should we compare these systems? When our networks are fundamentally changing in time, a geometric comparison method might not cut it. And here's an example to demonstrate why this might be the case. I've plotted noisy samples from three different two-dimensional recurrent neural networks here, as well as their condition averages in the darker color. And now, they look very similar geometrically, right? And so it might be reasonable to say that they are doing the same thing. But in fact, they have totally different internal dynamics that correspond to wildly different functions that the brain performs. The first one is a bistaple switch, which has been used to model binary decision making. The second is a line attractor, which has been used to model how the brain tracks eye position. And finally, the last one is a point attractor that has been used to model stimulus filtering. And this example raises a problem for a wide range of different pipelines in computational neuroscience that require comparing systems. And it's not limited to this specific case. It's incredibly easy to construct systems that disentangle geometry and dynamics. Yet state-of-the-art comparison methods like RSA, CKA, or Procrustes are all geometric, which means that these cases are in some sense adversarial for them. Now, you can try a number of ways to fit temporal data into geometric methods, such as time or condition averaging, but fundamentally, they're all still capturing geometry and not dynamics. So what is similarity in dynamical systems theory? Suppose we have two different dynamical systems, F and G, that have a mapping between them. That is, there exists some invertible transform phi that can align trajectories between each system. This means that the two functions that govern their dynamics are related as follows. But why compare the dynamical systems instead of the data x and y? You may not have equivalent data points or trajectories that you can try and align. Looking at the functions is much more general. The natural metric is then as follows. However, this is impractical to optimize over. We choose to map our systems to the best fitting linear system, which is motivated by a theory called Koopman operator theory. And then this is now tractable to optimize over. So how does DSA work? It's very straightforward algorithmically. First, we sample time series data from two different systems, which could be brains, artificial neural networks, or anything else you can think of. We embed these to a higher dimension using a nonlinear transform, which is designed to better linearize the systems. And we often use delay embeddings, but other methods like kernels might work as well. Next, we fit a global linear model to the data to approximate the dynamics. And finally, we compare the dynamic matrices with this novel shape metric that captures the notion of dynamical similarity I previously described. So what we've done is reduce the comparison to comparing the A and B matrices that characterize the dynamics instead of the representational dissimilarity matrices that capture the geometry. So let's see this in action. We simulate a 100 dimensional ring attractor, which has been experimentally identified in the brain for tracking head direction in both mice and fruit flies. After simulating, we apply a smooth nonlinear deformation, which does not change the ring topology, but increasingly modifies the geometry as the deformation parameter increases. We then compare these data at each parameter value to the smallest deformation parameter, a value of 0.1. And we see that while Procrustes increases smoothly as expected, because it's a geometric method, DSA stays close to zero, indicating that identifies the, the dynamics as equivalent. Finally, we wanted to demonstrate that DSA is sensitive to topological changes, such as, such as the tearing of a ring. We apply a different transformation here, such that when the transformation parameter is less than one, the ring attractor is broken and is in fact a curved line attractor. As before, we compared the system at different parameter values to the smallest value. And here we found that unlike Procrustes, DSA only jumps up away from zero when the parameter is close to one or the ring closes. So just to wrap up, dynamics and geometry are two different aspects of recurrent neural networks where dynamics instantiate the core mechanisms of computation. Our method, DSA, extends representational similarity analysis to capture core similarities in dynamics instead of geometry. We also have open source code that is easy to use and fast, and please check out the paper. Thank you.